I don't have the comfort of old habits just kind of working. Like everything kind of had to be thrown out. And um, whether it was completely necessary to have that happen or not, it did. And it caused me to sort of really reevaluate like how I organize information for the students to be able to access. And that, believe it or not, has really changed me about how I choose to access information. Um, I think it caused me to actually flash forward real, f to the present a lot, <laughs> a lot quicker than what I would have thought. Um, so in some ways, I mean, naturally, it's, 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 it's dealing with disaster. But I think that there has been some positive things to come out of it. And I am, I am starting to become aware of that. I'm not just all <laughs> completely negative about it. So it, it has sort of, in some ways, forced me to, to reevaluate some of my techniques. And I think in some ways improve. Here's the one thing that is difficult about this time, is that the lingering casual conversations don't happen as often. And that's hard. And uh, the one thing that I am looking forward to is that as the semester goes along, that the students that I've, I've used this in the past, Zoom office hours, they're really comfortable with. So my hope is, is that what we're missing in the classroom because of the pressure we feel to actually exit as quickly as possible and to scrub out and all that stuff, will then transfer over to Zoom when we're, we're able to have uh, a more comfortable sort of face-to-face -face, uh, intimate experience. That's harder to do in the classroom, especially whenever the students really feel that there's a lot of pressure on the instructors to try to make sure the technology works, to make sure those people that are not here are getting the information that they need, make sure they can access it from Sakai, anything like that. So those conversations haven't been happening right now because of everybody's just desire to get through the day, um, especially with us just now re-arriving on campus. Uh, but my hope is, um, is that the past will sort of, you know, prove, still prove to be true in this case, which is I will see those conversations come out whenever we work face to face on Zoom. Anxiety. Being really, really anxious. Um, anxious for the students. Um, anxious for my colleagues. Anxious for myself. And hoping that maybe we get better. Originally, whenever uh, the whole idea was floated, I was enormously concerned um, in terms of dual mode delivery, uh, being able to maintain focus, to be able to hold on to thoughts while I'm bouncing back and forth between things. And actually, it's gone smoother than what I would have thought. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I feel like the Sarah and everybody here in the building that has been working really hard to be able to make sure that everything is here and is a, is a very, it feels like it's a very thoughtful space that people spoke with others and their needs and responded whenever that was going on. So I, I feel like personally, it's gone much better than I would have thought. Uh, the technology has been better. Um, uh, the room is perfect. I couldn't have asked for a better room. Um, just in terms of being able to access the number of students that I've got um, to be able to do things like show video material in here and to be able to go back and forth between speaking mode and 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 watching content it's been it's been fantastic um, and then also the just for example like the camera that was set up with three different uh, camera positions to allow me flexibility to show different material and to to not worry about uh, as much about whether or not those students that are either in quarantine or ill themselves how they're experiencing what my classroom lecture is. It actually takes a lot of the pressure off. Um, so it's, it's, been, it's been good, I'll have to say.